In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody watching us online. Uh, today we celebrate the uh, feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica. And you may ask yourself, what is the Lateran Basilica? Well, the, this basilica is the cathedral church for Pope Francis. And, uh, and uh, it's a cathedral because the, uh, his chair, called the Cathedra, is located in a cathedral, much like up in Baltimore uh, and certainly in our nearby neighbors in Washington. And so when Pope Francis acts as the Bishop of Rome, that's where he celebrates Mass. Uh, so if you've ever been to St. Peter's or to St. Paul outside of the walls uh, or these other uh, major basilicas, you will not find a cathedra there, only in the Basilica of the Lateran family. So I'll give you some history during the homily. Uh, I just also want to make a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, it was brought to my attention that uh, we should sanitize the ambo and the microphone after the reading. So... Uh, we want to be consistent in that sanitizing process uh, that we do on Sunday. So the Eucharistic minister is going to come over to the ambo and sanitize after the lector reads and certainly after I preach the, uh, uh, the gospel reading. And secondly, uh, since uh, you all who are watching us online are submitting your prayer requests, uh, I'm going to open up uh, for all of you to voice out loud your intentions for us to pray for today. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge because you have a mask on. So I, I have to ask you two things. First, please do not talk over one another. So if you hear someone voicing a petition, wait for that person to stop and we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. And secondly, since you have a mask on, uh, you, you probably have to raise your volume. So please do so, so that we can hear you here in the church. And so, let us call to mind our sins, seeking the Lord's pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Today we glorify God as we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who from living and chosen stones prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty, increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed so that by new growth your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. You may be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east. There I saw water trickling from the southern side. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea, salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. And wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in distress. Therefore, we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The waters of the river gladden the city of God holy dwelling of the Most High. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building, according to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely, Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I have chosen and consecrated this house, says the Lord, that my name may be there forever. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the passer of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. In the deserts of the Near East, there is no more precious resources than water. And for the people of the scriptures, water is life. So when the prophet Ezekiel has a vision of God's restored temple in a liberated Jerusalem, the sure sign of God's presence is a river of pure water flowing from the temple door, enabling animals to multiply, fish to spawn, and fruit trees of every kind to prosper. Today we celebrate the dedication of the Lateran Basilica in Rome in the year 324. So perhaps some historical background will be of help today. The site of the present-day Basilica of St. John Lateran was occupied in ancient times by the palace of the Lateran family. And it came into the hands of the Emperor Constantine through his wife, Fausta, and he gave it to the church around the year 311. After a church council was held there in 313, it became the center of Christian life in Rome, the residence of the popes and the cathedral in Rome, which is still is today. Its first name was Basilica of the Savior, but it was later changed to St. John due to a Benedictine monastery nearby dedicated both to St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist. And so there is no such thing as a St. John Lateran. The entire church marks today's feast every year because as the Cathedral of Rome, St. John Lateran is the mother church of all the Christian world. And our feast today celebrates our own connection to all Catholic churches throughout the ministry of Pope Francis, who is the Bishop of Rome. Our own little parish church here is part of this river of living water, first envisioned by Ezekiel and then brought to reality in Jesus. We are meant to be water for the deserts and wastelands around us the water of compassion for the unloved and forgotten, the water of justice for the poor and the vulnerable, the water of peace for the despairing and those driven to the margins. Everything we do here at Seton Parish, from the Eucharist to the food pantry, from faith formation for adults and children to our famous Seton Stitchers, when it's safe for them to gather here again, is part of this wellspring of living water 
that God has dug here. Friends, we now present to the Lord our many needs and concerns as we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome, may the Holy Spirit strengthen his ministry among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For civic leaders, may God grant them fortitude and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives have been uprooted because of violence, trauma, or hatred, may God grant them comfort and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may God's grace help us hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they find a dwelling place among the angels this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for William Greenlee, for whom this Mass is offered, and for what or whom do we pray for today? And we make all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. You may be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit to the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here, and grant that by it those who seek your favor may receive in its place the power of the sacraments, and the answer to their prayers through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in your benevolence, you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you forever. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, your people spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray the words that Jesus himself once prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a good day, everybody. Please be seated, and then Mo will start dismissing you. Thank you.